In this video, we're going to show you how to make a two-part mold of this plastic housing. This part has both large and small openings, as well as some blind and through holes that will need to be addressed. So let's get started. I sprayed a finish coat using our SEM High Build Primer and followed up with a light sanding. It is a good idea to give your sealer plenty of time to cure before pouring your mold. Pouring too soon may cause the silicone not to cure. I first will cut materials for my base plate, splitter plate, damming plates, and mold box. I typically make molds that have a 3 quarter inch silicone wall around all sides of the part. There are several ways of making a mold box. In this case, I will be using melamine and drywall screws. Using hot glue is another option. I made the mold frames from four pieces of melamine. After I screwed the frame together, I cut it to make both the top and bottom frames. Make sure to counterseek your screws and place them out of the way from where you will be cutting the frame. I used double sided tape to attach the splitter board to my base plate and traced my frame location. It's a good idea to center and trace your pattern location as well. This part has some holes that need to be dammed up. I have cut some 8 inch pieces of PVC that I will hot glue in place. I am using tape to dam up the remaining small holes. There are two through holes on both sides of this part. For these holes I will use quarter inch dowel pins that will slide in and out of the mold as needed for casting and demolding. I now mist coat the splitter board with our InstaSet accelerator, apply drops of our InstaCure glue to the back of the pattern, and tack bond it to the splitter board where marked. I tack glue registration bars around all sides of the pattern, leaving about a quarter of an inch space between the bars and the pattern. I install the four side pins, hot glue the mold frame in place, and pull the pins out so they are up against the mold frame. For this mold, I have decided to use our TC5041 silicone. I like using this silicone due to its 45 shorey hardness, low viscosity, fast cure time, and its good tear strength. I thoroughly mix and evacuate the silicone. I brush the silicone into the small detail areas, like these small holes, to avoid any trapped air pockets before pouring to the top of the frame. Now that the first side of this mold is cured, I apply denatured alcohol to the hot glue around the frame for easy removal. I detach the splitter board from the base plate and flip the mold over. I carefully bend the splitter plate to break the tack bonds while making sure not to lift the pattern out of the cured silicone. Using denatured alcohol, I remove the hot glue and damming plates. I remove the tape used for damming as well. I now clean up any silicone flashing that's typically around the edges of the part, frame, and around the registration bars. Now that the first side of the mold has been cleaned up, I spray some of our zip release onto a piece of plastic so I can brush the release into the registration voids. This will help to avoid any bonding issues with the second half of the mold. This part has several bosses with deep blind holes. I have decided to partially fill these holes with our plastilina clay. I want to avoid any thin silicone areas that can easily be torn off. My plan is to leave enough of an indentation so I can drill the blind holes after the part has been cast. I now determine where I want my high and low corners to be when casting. I will locate the sprue someplace near the low corner, preferably to a thick wall section, and apply vents to the high points of the pattern when angled. Now I will spray our zip release over the rest of the mold. I can now hot glue the top mold frame in place. I mix, evacuate, and pour the second half of the mold. It's important to fill the second half of the mold slowly. It does not take much pressure from the silicone to knock down the vents. I make it a point to pour from all sides of the mold box. This helps to reduce the force in any one given direction. 
Now that the second half of the mold is cured, I remove the vents, sprue, and the four side pins. Separate the molds and clean up any flashing. It's a good idea to wash the mold with a mild liquid dishwashing detergent like Dawn. Rinse and blow off with air. If you have a high gloss finish, you do not want to wipe the interior of the mold. This can scuff up your mold surface, which will adversely affect your part finish. For parts of this size or larger, I make a base plate and top plate to keep the two halves from separating. This will give you more accurate parts and you'll have less flashing to clean up. I use tracing paper to mark the sprue and vent hole locations and spray mount that to my top plate and drill 3 quarter inch holes with a spade drill. It's a good idea to apply Vaseline to the hole walls of your top plate, just in case casting material leaks out of your vents. Doing this will make it easy to remove the cured casting material. Now to make a casting, apply one of our mold releases. To get the most parts out of your mold, you'll want to use our stoner urethane release E236. If you plan on bonding or painting your cast part, we would recommend using our stoner rocket release E302. If you made your mold with a high gloss part and want to keep that gloss level, we would recommend that you do not use a spray release. Keep in mind, by not using a mold release, your mold will not last as long. I sandwich the mold with my bottom and top plate and wrap tape around three or four places. Angle the tool so your sprue is at the bottom and your vents are at the high points. For this part, I'm using our TC891, which has a work time of 12 minutes. I should have enough work time to mix, degas, pour, and put the mold in a pressure chamber. We typically use 60 PSI for our castings. It's been about four hours, so we are now ready to demold the cast part. I first remove the vents, sprue, and four side pins. The part looks pretty good. I see there are a couple of trap bubbles that did not make it out of the part through the vents. Next attempt, I will angle the mold more, which should solve this problem. Using baking soda and thin super glue, these voids can be filled easily. I pack in the baking soda and remove any excess baking soda from the area. You can now sand this area if needed. You can find links to the BJB products used in the making of this video in the description. We have a wide variety of quality mold making and casting materials with technical help to help you choose the right product for your application. Be sure to subscribe to BJB's YouTube channel and follow us on social media to learn more about mold making and casting. BJB, continuing to take the mystery out of materials.